Hi everybody. Excuse the hat. I'm having a really bad hair day. And as much as I love you all, I can't be bothered to uh, do it up for you. Because it's kind of late and I'm a bit tired. I'm afraid this is not going to be a, a, a deeply introspective and interesting video. And I apologise for that. Um, I, I went to a Manchester United game yesterday in Manchester which was exciting for me because they're the football team I support um, and that took me kind of all day and kind of wiped me out so even today even though I've got a good night's sleep I'm utterly physically and emotionally drained from that experience uh, we won so that's good but travel was a bit of a nightmare um, a friend of mine uh, got mugged halfway through the journey, which was a bit silly. Well, not silly, that was terrible actually. But um, he survived, he's fine. So, yeah. Uh, long story short, I'm tired. This is going to be not a very decent video. I apologise because it's kind of a complicated question and I'm probably not going to do it justice. Um, it is, do you think trans and genderqueer people should be lumped into the LGBTQ acronym? Have you found your interactions explaining your gender identity with other people under this LGBTQ umbrella have been positive or negative? Do you feel more understood by them in general than straight individuals? Okay. I am bored with the LGBTQ acronym. I uh, have not used that acronym or any of its letters to describe myself or really to describe other people unless they insist upon it um, in a very long time. If I need to talk about gender and sexuality minority people I just use queer. I think it's a much more all-encompassing word and frankly acronyms confuse me and get on my nerves. So yeah. And um, I think I may have said this before but I kind of like words that don't necessarily have a, a modern connotation which is part of the issue I have with genderqueer. Um, it just sounds really like modern buzzword to me, um, which is a bit controversial because hi, this is gender queer chat. Um, but I use it because it's uh, it's become a common enough word that people have some frame of reference ish when I bring it up in enlightened circles. That's what it comes down to for me, actually. Um, people who are educated and aware about. Um, queer identity and being trans or being genderqueer um, are usually the people I feel most comfortable discussing my own gender identity with. I don't need them to feel my feelings. I don't need to have a lovey um, trans bonding moment. Although those are nice sometimes. Um, I have some really good friends who are trans who I can, you know, be like, ah, oh, today was great, but I just had this body dysphoria and I was like, Ugh just put me off. I was having a beautiful day, the sun was out, and all of a sudden I was like, oh, boobs, you know, and they get that, and I could go, you know, I could turn to my three cisgendered uh, female straight housemates and say the same thing, and they'd be like, okay, what? So, yeah, it's nice to have an empathetic, um, relationship with other trans people but I don't need them to I, I don't insist that they feel what I'm feeling and walk a hundred miles in my shoes or whatever I just when I'm talking about my gender identity want them to either be educated and aware and respectful or to be willing to be educated and aware and respectful um being skeptical is fine as long as they're willing to talk about it 
and consider that, you know, I'm a person and I'm not like some creature because I, I'm not male or female. Um, yeah, it's really, it really just comes down to whether or not a person is educated and aware. And generally, LGBTQ people, queer people, tend to be, out of the whole population, the most educated, aware, and respectful of, you know, people in general. Um, but there are exceptions to that rule. There are many exceptions to that rule rule, you know, in terms of straight people and cisgendered people. There are a lot of educated people out there these days. Um, and yeah, so really that's what it comes down to for me. I've certainly had my fair share of encounters with um, mostly cisgendered gay men who it doesn't register for them when I say genderqueer. Um, so I, I don't want to make a generalization, but m most of the time when I've, you know, gone to a, another queer person and been like, oh, genderqueer, a, um, it's tended to be gay men who, who don't know what that is or are kind of resistant to that idea. Um, I'm not sure if that's just a me personally experience um, because you know sometimes when I say I'm trans to gay men um, they'll suddenly be like does this mean that you know like you are attracted to me and I could potentially be attracted to you um, so I wonder if that makes them kind of question their own sexuality a little bit um, I mean I flatter myself to think that most of my very good looking uh, gay male friends would be attracted to me. Um, if any of them are watching, which is very not likely. Hey guys. Um, but yeah, that's tended to be the case, and that's even been the case for my very best friend in the whole world. Um, so go figure, you know. Um, and then with straight people, many straight people have never heard the word genderqueer before in their lives. Um, but really, it comes down to whether or not they are willing to are willing to hear it again. Um, and I think that is sort of maybe fifty fifty, which is probably you know the same with well not same but. Uh, similar to, to queer people actually. Um, yeah, it's, I guess, you know, uh, for, for some people it's more like readily identifiable with because their, their gender, their sexuality is not mainstream and, you know, they empathize with that. Um, but, you know, I think a lot of people that I'm willing to tell are willing to talk to about it, um, are at least going to be open to talk about it. So that is what it comes down to for me. I've gone on long enough. Jack, what are you doing? So let's go to bed. Uh, I apologize for the quality of this video. Sleep tight, all of you, and I will see you next week.